You want to understand how the sharing of permissions in Google Drive works? I'm Chanel Greco from Superis, and in this video, I'll show you the different options you have when you're sharing files and folders in Google Drive and how you can use them. Would you mind hitting the subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on any of the videos? Because it's so that twice a week I publish videos about Google Drive, about Google Apps Script, Google Docs, and so on. And I wouldn't want you missing out on any of those videos. The first thing to understand about sharing permissions is the setup of Google Drive. There's a consumer version of Google Drive. That's the free version that you and I have if we have a Google account. We don't pay for it. And there we have our My Drive the, where we can create files, folders, and we can share these with others. And then there's kind of like an in-between. So it's still a, con um, a consumer version. It's what you see here. It's one Google and it's just Google Drive expanded. It costs very little. I'm not quite sure. I think about two or three dollars per month, but that's still the consumer version of my drive. Then on the other hand, there's G Suite. G Suite is for schools, for companies, for teams, for organizations that need a bit more of um, structure also governance. And that's a whole different ball game. So Google Drive in G Suite is much more powerful. And since it's used by organizations who might have to um, or who might be under certain um, rules or certain um, legal requisitions, uh, there are there are administrators who can restrict certain functionality. So it's possible that if you're using Google Drive as part of G Suite in your organization, you might not be seeing all of the sharing options that I'm going to be showing you. Because in our example, the Jane example account that we use, we have a G Suite business account but I give full possibilities, full sharing possibilities on this um, example account. So if you, for example, try to share a file from your G Suite Google Drive business account with somebody outside of your organization and you actually do not see that option when you try to share, then contact your Google your G Suite administrator because it's very possible that she or he deactivated that possibility. What we see here is Jane examples My Drive. Keep in mind, My Drive, not Shared Drive. So you see here how we have a My Drive visible and a Shared Drive. Well, I just mentioned that we're here in a G Suite account, so a Google Drive that belongs to a G Suite account from an organization who has a G Suite paid plan. And that's why we could also share files and folders in Share Drive. But I'm specifically now creating this tutorial based on My Drive, which is very similar to the consumer based Google Drive, my drive that you will find there. Share drive, you have other possibilities. Go ahead and leave me a comment below if you would like me to cover that in a separate video tutorial. Okay, so in our scenario here, we have our cost analysis, this file, and we would like to share this. How do we do so? You right click on it, the context menu pops up, and you click on share. Now, let me go and say, got this. Now at the moment, spring of almost summer of 2020, some of you, when you right click and want to share a file in my drive, will see exactly this user interface. That means that you have the rolled out the new user interface, the updated version of the user interface. Some of you might still see the old user interface. Why? Because whenever Google 
creates an update, launches a new functionality or changes the design and the way something works, then what they do is that they have a rolling rollout. So they don't just switch the flick on for everyone, but it's a rolling rollout. And so it might take up till a couple of weeks until all the users are migrated and see the new functionality or the updated user interface. Okay, so in our case, we have this updated user interface and we see that Jane example is the owner of this document. And the easiest thing to do is just to add people. Let's say we want to add Craig Smith and we can notify him about that we're sharing this document with him. We can change him to be just a viewer of the document. Then he couldn't change anything in it leave comments in the document or be an editor. That means also change the content of the document, change it for everyone. Okay. Something else that you can choose, and I've covered this in another video that you can restrict the sharing possibility. So you can, um, make it possible so that someone can edit the document so that that person's an editor, but that person can't change the permissions and the sharing options. This might be super useful if you want others to collaborate on your documents, but you don't want them resharing that document with other people. So giving other people editing rights on that document. And here the viewers and commentators, if you untick this and they can't download, can't make copies of your files and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, those are the advanced settings that you can choose. Okay. So if, if I, um, let me choose, no wait. So here you see it. Um, this might not be intuitive, but you can actually click on this and it changes. So the restricted mode is used when you want to share documents with specific people. So you have to, um, have the email address of that person when you want to share it with them. That's the restricted mode. As it says here, only people added can open with this specific link. So you can add the person here and then copy link and send it to them. Or as we saw before, if you add a person, then automatically another interface shows up and you can send them a message and say, Hey Craig, here's the document that you can edit and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and click on this again, because I have different sharing options. I can also say that I'm sharing with anyone at Saparis. That means anyone who has a G Suite account from Saparis in our organization automatically has, in this case now, viewing rights, but we could also bump that up to editing rights. Okay, that's option number two to share with people. The third option is the least restrictive. That's anyone with the link. So also here we have the possibility of, um, choosing which level of access that person has and anyone who has this link here now, which I copy and send out via email, for example, can access this document. So that's the least restrictive. Um, if you want a bit more of control of what people can do with that document, then you would say that anyone with the link has access, but can only view. So then people can actually see the content of your document, but they couldn't make any changes to it. They couldn't copy it and so on and so forth. Okay. So those are the three options that you have when it comes to sharing. So that's the way the concept behind the sharing permissions on Google drive on my drive. If you have any questions concerning what you just learned here, what I just mentioned, or if you have a specific sharing problem that you want to have answered, go ahead and leave me a comment below and I'll be glad to get back to you.